Hello friends, here in this video we will see a problem based on calculation of moment of inertia for an I section. Here we have a question. It is given that find the least MI that is least moment of inertia and polar MI that is polar moment of inertia of a symmetrical I section having following details. First it is given that the flanges they are having 100 mm into 15 mm area, web thickness is 10 mm and the overall depth is 280 mm. So whatever is given here, I'll write that in the form of data. Now it is given that the flanges, so here I'll write down, since there is an I section, so there will be top flange and bottom flange. Both are having the same area, that is 100 mm into 15 mm. Next, web thickness it is 10 mm, then overall depth that is 280 mm. Now, with this data available, the question is to find the least mi. Here, we have to calculate out of the moment of inertia about Ixx and IYY which one is the least value that we have to select and the next thing is we have to find polar MI polar MI is the moment of inertia about the third axis which is it so with the data available let us try to get the solution to this problem first I will draw that I section on an axis system in the solution part the first thing would be to draw the I section now as it is given in the problem that top flange and bottom flange both have the same dimensions so it means it is symmetrical I section this is the axis of symmetry Here I am drawing the top flange. And here is the bottom flange and here we have the web. So on this I will mark the dimensions. Top flange and bottom flange both are having the same width. And that is. 100 mm next the height is given that is 15 mm even for the bottom flange it is same next here the overall depth is given as 280 so here I have 15 and 15 which becomes 30 so this distance it has to be 250 mm and now if we see the overall depth is 280 it is 250 plus 15 and here it is plus 15 so that is the overall depth as 280 next web thickness is given as 10 mm so here we have this thickness as 10 mm and now after we have marked all the dimensions the question is to find the MI that is moment of inertia now before calculating the moment of inertia first thing is we should know where is the location of centroid so here I'll say that since the given I section is symmetric about both x-axis and y-axis so therefore here I will calculate x-bar which will be half of 100 because x-bar is the distance from the y-axis and here this will be x-bar 100 by 2 
so that is 50 mm next after getting x bar we can calculate y bar also y bar will be half of the total depth total depth is 280 so half of 280 that is equal to y bar since y bar distance is half so wherever the y axis and x axis they intersect that gives us the centroid and once we have located the centroid we can calculate the mi now how to calculate mi first of all we will divide this i section into three rectangles this one will be rectangle number one here this is rectangle second and here this is rectangle third now after dividing into three rectangles we can say that first we are going to find the moment of inertia about i x x that is the x axis of complete i section so now i will say that since m i that is moment of inertia about x axis is given by it will be i x x is equal to i x x 1 plus i x x 2 plus i x x 3 that is we will add up all three moment of inertia for respective areas I'll keep this as the first equation next I'll go for the calculation of i x x 1 so therefore i x x 1 that is m i for the first section it can be calculated as now as we see in the diagram here the x axis of the i section is passing through 140 mm but the x axis of rectangle number 1 is here so there is difference between these two axes and that distance will be denoted as h1 so here we are going to use parallel axis theorem so i x x 1 will be equal to i g 1 that is moment of inertia for rectangle 1 about its centroid which will which would be g 1 plus area 1 into h 1 square this i will write down that it is by parallel axis theorem next after writing this here as we can see area 1 also we can calculate that will be 100 into 15 and ig1 so it will become ixx1 will be equal to ig1 is nothing but bd cube by 12 because it is the moment of inertia formula about x axis for rectangle number 1 so it is bd cube by 12 plus area is b into d into h1 h1 square h1 is the distance between the two axes so it is visible that it is 140 minus from 140 we would be subtracting half of 15 that will give us h1 so 150 minus half of 15 square next therefore ixx1 value will be b and d as we can see here b is 100 d is 15 so 100 into 15 cube divided by 12 plus area is 100 into 15 and here this will be 140 minus 7.5 square so throughout if I calculate I will get the value of ixx1 and my answer is 26.36 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this is the value of ixx1 so now after getting ixx1 I'll say that ixx2 is also equal to ig2 plus area2 into h2 square now something to be noted here is that this is again by parallel axis theorem now as we can see we use parallel axis theorem when there is difference between the two axes like for example axis of rectangle 1 and axis of uh, the complete i section they were at a distance so this distance was h1 so we had used parallel axis theorem but in this case if we see 
the complete x axis for the i section is at 140 mm distance and the x axis for rectangle 2 will also be at 140 mm distance so distance h is 0 so here if the value of h2 is 0 this complete term goes away so we are left with ix62 is equal to ig2 which is nothing but bd cube by 12 since h2 is equal to 0 so ix62 will be here b and d values b is 10 d is 250 so 10 into 250 cube divided by 12 so hence ix62 the value is 13.02 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 next after getting ix62 we will calculate ix63 so similarly ix63 is equal to ig3 plus area 3 into h3 square again by parallel axis theorem so therefore ix63 will be equal to ig3 that is the mi for rectangle 3 about its own x axis which is here i am which i am drawing so this will be ig3 that is bd cube by 12 plus area 3 is b into d then h3 here as it is 140 mm which is the location of centroid from bottom so from the top also it is 140 mm y bar so we have to find the distance between the centroid and the x axis for rectangle 3 so this will become h3 for us so now h3 will be 140 minus 15 by 2 whole square so here i'll keep the values ix3 is equal to b is 100 and d is 15 so the answer would be same as ix61 because the dimensions are also same and it is symmetrical i section so ix63 value will be same as ix61 that is 26.36 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 after getting ix63 also we can say that putting all values in equation 1 we will get ix6 so therefore put all values in equation number 1 so here we have ixx is equal to ix61 it was 26.36 into 10 raised to 6 plus ix62 that was 13.02 into 10 raised to 6 and ix63 is same as ix61 26.36 into 10 raised to 6 so here if i add up all the values i'll get the answer of ix6 which is 65.75 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this i'll keep it as equation number a next after getting ix6 as the question is we have to find out the least mi least moment of inertia so after ix6 we will calculate iyy so therefore mi about y axis is given by iyy is equal to iyy1 plus iyy2 plus iyy3 now if we look here into the diagram then since it is symmetrical i section so the y axis of rectangle 1 will be at 50 mm from origin y axis of rectangle 2 will be also at same distance similarly for rectangle 3 also the distance is same and for complete i section it is x bar is equal to 50 mm so there is no need of parallel axis theorem because all the axes are along the same line so here i can directly write the formula i y y is db cube by 12 for first rectangle plus db cube by 12 
फॉर सेकेंड रेक्टेंगल प्लस डी बी क्यूब बाई ट्वेल्व फॉर थर्ड रेक्टेंगल सो देर फॉर आई वाई वाई इज इक्वल टू इफ यू सी द फर्स्ट रेक्टेंगल देन इन दैट डी इज फिफ्टीन बी इज हंड्रेड सो फिफ्टीन इंटू हंड्रेड क्यूब बाई ट्वेल्व नेक्स्ट फॉर सेकेंड रेक्टेंगल बी इज टेन एंड डी इज टू फिफ्टी Similarly, for the third rectangle, the dimensions are same. D is fifteen, B is hundred. So from this, I will get the value of I Y Y, and my answer is two point five two into ten raised to six mm raised to four. I will keep this as equation B. So now, after getting I Y Y. Here the question was to find least mi. We will compare equation number a where we had got i x x, and here there is i y y in equation b. If we look at both the answers, i x x is 65.75 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. i y y is only 2.52 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So I'll say that therefore, from equation number a and b. i x x is greater than i y y so therefore least m i will be i y y that is moment of inertia about y axis so therefore the answer is i y y is equal to the least m i which is 2.52 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 so this is the first answer next if we see in this question they were telling us to calculate find the least mi we have found out and now polar mi that is i z z so after this i can say that now since polar mi that is polar moment of inertia is given by the formula is i z z is equal to i x x plus i y y so therefore i z z is equal to i x x value it was it was 26.36 into 10 raised to 6 plus i y y it is 2.52 into 10 raised to 6 so your uh, i x x actually it was 65.75 that value was of i x x 1 so after adding them i am getting i z z as 68.27 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 the second answer so if we look into the, this question they were telling us to find two values least mi and polar moment of inertia we have found out both the values and with this we complete the problem